How's it going everybody? Uh, my name is Wash Graham from the Kickstation support discord and today I'll be showing you how to set up uh, the Kickstation on a server. The setup process for TKS on a, a new server or a new PC or any new machine that you might have is pretty simple and straightforward but um, I decided that maybe making this video before the Clay 350 release, which is a pretty big release, and a lot of our users, maybe some first time users will be going for it this weekend. I figured this might be a good, at least a good refresher for people who have done this process before, and also just a really good informational source for anybody who, who is new to the bot game or hasn't really done this before. So if this is your first time ever using TKS, then you can ignore this first step. But let's say that you're someone like me that runs their copy on their home PC and you want to maybe run it on a server this weekend because you want to have a better internet connection or you want to have better specs just to have the bot run more tasks or something like that. The first thing you'll want to do is go open your actual copy of TKS on your desktop and then under options, what you'll want to do is click export settings here. And then what this will do is take all of your profiles and quick test settings and stuff like that and, um, and save them to your computer in a JSON file. And basically the reason why that's useful is that when you end up setting up your new copy on a server, what you can do is import all of your settings using the import settings button, and then you won't have to retype in your profiles, reassign your quick task information, uh, etc. So this actually saves a lot of time in the process, which can be really, really useful, especially if you have a lot of profiles and a lot of um, unique quick task settings. The other thing that current users will have to do before they move their copy to a new server or a new PC is you'll have to click reset license here on the options tab. You'll have to re-log in if you go back to the same PC, but that basically just allows you to open the copy on another machine. Again, if this is your first time ever using the bot, you don't have to do any of these steps. So at this point, we're ready to deploy a server. So originally I was going to use Vulture because their, their server creation process is pretty simple. And I had a bunch of credit on my account but they restricted my limit to the number of instances I could create, so I'm gonna make one in AWS instead. So here's the homepage for uh, EC2 server creation on AWS. Uh, this is one of three major options that we recommend from TKS. Uh, AWS, Google Cloud, and Vulture are the ones I at least recommend. I think most of our users use one of those three. So here I'm gonna scroll down and pick Windows 2012 R2, wherever it is. That's probably our personal suggestion versus 2016. Uh, just, it seems to be a little more stable than the 2016 base. And there's been some issues with TKS on 2016 that are kind of miscellaneous, but um, it really doesn't matter that much. So I'm gonna pick the T2.2 extra large, which is pretty good specs for a pretty powerful server, eight core CPU, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and pretty good network performance. So I'm gonna click review and launch. Or I'm gonna go to this place. So I'm just gonna say yes to all of these things. Normally, I don't use AWS that often, so I'm just gonna click yes to all of them. And I'm gonna click launch. And I'm gonna make a new key pair. All right, so the Instance creation process has been completed and as you can see here I have a new instance type this t2.2 extra large that's running and all the status text have been passed uh, The one thing that I didn't show on the recording was the creation of a private key that you have to use like to authenticate the server Essentially, I just used the one that I've used before uh, and that that step is pretty self-explanatory and only AWS uses that step all right, so the next thing you want to do is basically get a remote desktop service or application to open the server in. And so my favorite is this one called Microsoft Remote Desktop. I think on Windows, it's just called Remote Desktop. And on Mac, you can search in the App Store for um, Windows Remote Desktop 10 or something like that. And it's basically an interface you can use to connect to servers like ones from AWS or Google Cloud. So to keep on moving forward, you click Add a uh, Desktop, and then you'll enter in the PC name, so the IP address, the user account, and the display name. And from there, you should be able to log in. Okay, so I skipped the steps of the server getting set up, but basically this is what you should your screen should look like at this point once you've launched your server successfully. And you can see all the server information in the top right corner usually. So what I already did was I logged into um, I logged into my Gmail and I found my email with my Kickstation activation and license key. And so basically from here, I'm just gonna click through all the links and download the necessary frameworks and then the bot installer itself. 
and then from there we should be uh, well on our way to having it set up successfully. Uh, the one thing that you might actually have to edit on your own before you can download things successfully on most servers is you have to go to server manager and then if you on the left side you click local server you want to scroll to the right where it says IE enhanced security configuration and you're going to want to turn that from on which is the default setting to off for administrators and users and that's because sometimes some internet content is blocked by default by the server manager and you want to turn that off so you can make sure that you have everything downloaded correctly. So as you can see from here, that the first link I actually already clicked was this link to the installer for the actual TKS executable file. So once you click this, it'll download something called installer right here to your downloads folder. And you'll want to click this and then click run. And I actually already did that so it didn't do anything. But if you did that for the first time, this little icon would show up. So there's a few other things you actually need to do before you can click the icon and start moving forward. And these are downloading these frameworks. And... Some of them are actually already installed on certain servers, and so I can't remember whether it's installed on the AWS server or not, but so I'm just going to click the link and then click run here. And then what, after it's finished extracting the file, it will show me, I think, a message either saying it has been in installed already or not. So here it says Net Framework 4.7.2 has already been installed, so I can just close this and then move on to the next link on the email. So both of the net frameworks were already installed on the AWS server. So the next thing is the Visual C++ 2017 redistributable. And so I clicked on the x86 version. Agree to the license terms installation process is starting now. So from that, setup is successful from there. You don't have to click anything else from the downloads section. And then the last thing is the 2013 redistributable. And then I'm clicking the 86 one. Allow once pop up. <laughs> Click run here. Agree to the license terms. And everything's successful. So now we have all the redistributables and the actual Kickstation file downloaded to our PC. So next we're just going to try to open it from here. And this might take a few seconds when you first do it. So now I'm prompted to enter my serial key and I'm going to scroll up and copy it for my email and then paste it here. I'm going to activate it. It's going to show a little flashing activating sign for a few seconds. And if you successfully did it, then you should have this window pop up now. So at this point, you are basically done. You have your bot set up on the new server. Everything should be running correctly now because you've installed all the uh, redistributables and the other files that were linked in the email. And so the last thing you can do now, and that ties back to the first thing I mentioned in this video, is you can go to the options tab and then click import settings. And an easy way to do this if you're on a server is just to email yourself the file that you saved from the export settings button on your main PC. And then you can just download it from your Gmail in your browser and then put it on desktop or something and then import it from there. And then after you do that, all of your settings, all of your quick task um, preferences, etc., will already be in the bot. So basically, if you've made it this far and you can get your new bot open on your server, uh, you're basically done. You've successfully set it up on a server and you're ready to start going. For some people and some server configurations, you might have to customize a few other security settings um, in the control panel, which you can find by clicking on the Windows icon in the bottom left. And some of these settings might include turning off the Windows firewall for a short period of time, or disabling the uh, Windows Defender uh, default antivirus. And for this this reason is because sometimes the downloads from the .NET site or the uh, visual uh, redistributables might not be able to be downloaded correctly otherwise. And so for this case on this AWS server, I was able to do all that stuff without any issue, without having to customize these settings. So currently my firewall is all turned on right now. But if you do run into issues, we have a full guide on how to troubleshoot these uh, certain small issues. But one of the easiest things to check first is by turning off the firewall and turning off the antivirus and trying to download them again. And then once you've been able to successfully download them, uh, you can just return these things on as it's better for your server security. So that's about the only other thing that you might have to change uh, to get your TKS downloaded. But if you made it this far and you were able to activate your key, uh, you're good to go. That's basically all there is to this video. 
The only other thing I might have not thought of is to set up some monitoring tasks so your monitor can be connected and to uh, import your proxies, but that should be included in your um, in your export settings file. So just to reiterate that doing that from your original copy before you deactivate it is extremely useful and will save you a lot of time in setting up the new copy on a server, which can be a little more confusing and a little more difficult to navigate, especially if you're on a laptop and not on a really, um, not a really strong Wi-Fi connection either. So that's about it. I hope this video was informative and in teaching you how to set up a server. Maybe if it's your first time or you're not uh, confident doing it with the TKS uh, framework and all the things you have to download there. So yeah, hopefully you learned a lot from this video. And if you have any other questions, like always, you can ask a support member uh, on Discord or send us an email. The link is in the description of this video. So yeah, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe. And uh, tune in next time for some more KickStation informational content.